So let's go ahead and create the tag module. So let's name it as a tank module sample. And we create it in the analytical mode. As I have mentioned earlier, there are these modes in the program which are available for creating the model. So we select the analytical mode and select any of the units which you want to go ahead with. Let us go ahead with the metric unit and click on the create button. So once we have created the model, now further, there are several ways in which we can create a water tank model. But in this exercise, we are going to use the parametric model generator for creating the water tank model. Now, in order to create the parametric surfaces, we need to select the nodes in a particular sequence. So, let us start by creating the nodes for the water tank geometry. So, let us create a node of at a 0, 0 coordinate. And uh, as our tank model is a 5 meter by 6 meter, the smaller one, let me keep the uh, tank layout and the tire model side by side so that we are able to judge on the node distances. So our first node, let us assume that the left bottom node is a 0, 0 coordinate. So let us just go ahead and add some nodes. So the second node, so this is the second node. So x coordinate will remain the same and the z coordinate will be minus 6. So now we have both of these nodes which are created. Now ahead to this, we can either keep on mentioning the node coordinates or we can simply copy and paste these nodes. So uh, let us go to the top view and select the node cursor to select these nodes and simply copy and paste nodes at a distance of 5 meters. So in the x direction, I say paste it at 5 meters and simply click on OK. So these nodes will go one more step above at 1 meter in the z direction. So I said z as minus 1 meter and same for this nodes. So for now, I'm simply clicking Control C, Control V, and Z in one meter. Now, once both of these nodes are created, I'll select both the nodes, copy, paste nodes at a distance of 12 meter in X direction. Okay. So this node geometry for me is ready. And the node data automatically comes in. Here. Let us go to the 3D view. So now this is only in the plan x, y. Now we need to select all these nodes and push it up in the y direction. So again, copy, paste nodes. Okay. So uh, before that, we have the smaller tank, which is just up to a height of 4.5 meters. So let me paste it at 4.5, click on OK. Now again in the view, we select four, these four nodes, copy and paste it at a height of 7 meters and click on OK. Now if we come back and see in the CD view, these nodes will appear in like this. So now let us go ahead and just model the smaller tank. So what I do is I just select the nodes of the uh, smaller tank. And in the view option, I select to see only the selected nodes. So I click on the selected object and again on the 3D. Uh, now in the geometry tab, we have a parametric models option. So through this mode, we will be able to create the walls of the tank. So when I click on the preview model and click on the add, 
a cursor for creating the parametric surface will appear. So this cursor is for creating the parametric surface. While creating, I have to select the nodes which will form a parametric surface. So I just go ahead to select the four nodes. And this is the wall number one of my smaller tank. So I can name it whatever I want to. But uh, let us for now name it as W1. Define it as a wall. And as we are modeling a tank wall, we need to assign the subtype as a wall tank. Okay. And then the meshing type can be either quadrilateral or a triangular. So whatever type of meshing is required can be selected from here. Now there are two options for creating or determining the mesh size. One is we can mention the number of segments or boundary that each side or each edge of the wall should have or we can just mention what should be the target element size. So uh, by default, a uh, target element size will be shown by the stat pro. But if we want to just keep same for all the walls of the tank, we can just keep it that way. So for now, let us go with the default mesh size and just click on OK. So once I click on OK, a mesh will be just created but it will actually form the plates only when i click on the merge mesh option so as of now the boundary of the mesh or the wall has been created so as soon as i click on preview models we see that we are not able to see or the plates are not created so once i click on merge mesh the plates will also be created. So now when I go to select and select the plate cursor, I will see that the plates are also being created. Okay. So now in the same way, we will go ahead for creating other walls of the tank. So I just select the other four nodes. I have a practice of modeling the walls in a clockwise pattern so that the orientation remains the same so this is say my wall number two subtype is tank wall and this is a very small target element size so i just select it to be one meter and click on ok so now it has created a mesh and again when we click on w2 and click on merge mesh the mesh will be created. So in the same way, we can go on creating the different walls of uh, the smaller tank as well as the bigger tank. So as of now, we have created three walls, which is the W1, W2 and W3. These are the three walls of the smaller tank that we wanted to create. So let us have a glimpse at what is the actual uh, layout of the walls for the smaller and the bigger tanks. So coming back to our layout, we have modeled wall number one, two and three of the smaller tank. Now this portion of the tank or the this wall is a common wall between the smaller and the bigger tank. So this tank is of height 7 meter and this tank is of height 4.5 meter. So now we need to model this wall as a full 7.5 meter heighted wall. So now again for this particular wall. I mean this wall, there are two options to model it. One is we model it as a single wall itself starting from here to here. But if you want to design this particular 
structure in RCDC. Then it is suggested to follow a practice of modeling three different surfaces. That is, one is this surface, which is marked in or highlighted in the orange color. One is the green color surface and the remaining, which is the gray colored surface. So we will model this entire wall as three different surfaces. The reason being in RCDC, the junction detailing of this junction needs to be done in a proper way. That is the horizontal reinforcement and the vertical reinforcement coming in from these two walls of the smaller tank needs to be properly detailed as this at this junction. So it is suggested to model this entire wall into three parts if you are aiming to design your structure in RCDC. So we will currently model this as three surfaces or this wall divided into three surfaces. But it can also be done as a single wall also. There will be no variation or no difference in the results for both the type of the modeling. Okay, so what I have done is I have modeled this entire wall into three parts. That is W6. This is W5, which is this part of the wall and W4, which is the center portion of the wall, which has a common sharing between the smaller tank and the bigger tank. So in this way, it is suggested to model three different walls or three different surfaces whenever there is a junction forming between any two wall or whenever two walls are intersecting. Let it be a crisscross that is a plus shaped wall or let it be a uh, perpendicular wall that is it can be forming a L junction or a T junction. So in any of these cases, uh, we suggest or it is advisable to model a wall which gets break into different parametric surfaces. I have just modeled the entire tank that is the smaller tank and the bigger tank both. On the same guidelines or on the same workflow basis, we can model the uh, base slab that is the raft slab as well as also model the top slab if any of the tank is enclosed. So in our case, the bigger tank, which is of the seven meter height, is an enclosed tank. So what I have done is, I have simply created the two slabs. That is, one is the top slab. So I have created this parametric surface and assigned the type as a slab to this surface. Whereas for the bottom slab as well, I have selected the boundary node or the end node to create the slab. So the slab is also modeled on the same way like we do it for the walls.